Hey guys, David here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make iron oxide for thermite or any science experiment stuff that you'll need. So first thing you'll need is a tub of warm water, and you want to load that water up with salt. A lot of salt. Mine's pretty loaded, just because I did this beforehand. You want to dissolve as much salt in the water as possible. Then you're going to need a 9 or 6 volt battery or anything that can really hold it. You're going to need something iron, like this. And you want to attach it to an alligator clip, as seen, and put it in the water. Then, you're going to grab your power supply, and you're going to connect um, the alligator clip to the positive side. And then, you're going to need a stripped wire with another piece of iron or anything on it at the bottom. Put the iron piece in the water and connect it to the power supply, as seen. And you'll start to see a bunch of bubbles, and you want to make sure that these things are not touching. Like, not. Like, this and this are not touching, otherwise this will not work. So, you just want to leave that on like that. Make sure it's all good, and like, sit it overnight, or while you're at school or, you know, something along those lines. Here, let me just position the camera so you can actually see the bubbles to make, as you can see, it started bubbling, which is a good sign. Everything is in working order, and that's how you do it. I'll be back with the finished results in a second. So... Yeah, you just gotta hold it here, and I'll be back in a second. Hey guys, we're back. It's been about a day since I started the iron oxide process. And as you can see, the liquid inside this jar has turned brown. And I'm not sure if this will show up on the camera, camera, but there's a lot of sediment in the bottom of the jar, and that's actually our iron oxide. And if you look at the nail, or a bolt, or whatever you use, it's actually coated in this stuff, and don't worry, this stuff will just come off. So, right now, I'm going to show you how to get your iron oxide from the jar. So you're just going to need a clean jar of some kind, a funnel, and a coffee filter just goes right in there. And I bet you guys can see where this is going. We're just going to filter out the iron oxide. So, I'm just going to set the camera right there for the best view possible. And don't worry, the stuff on the screw, it comes off. You can just scrape away. Make sure it just doesn't go in it. As you can see, the screw is very, very worn down, like a centimeter down. Now I'm just going to set this screw over here. And now I'm just going to carefully, very carefully, pour some of the liquid in. Then wait, and as you can see, it is filtering out. So I'm going to filter the rest of this, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys, I'm back. It's been a couple days, and all the water has 
filtered out of the iron oxide solution and as you can see at the bottom there's actually iron oxide in the bottom and I'm going to be showing you how to filter that out later but so since it's been a couple days the so the iron oxide is actually has some time to dry like this it's still moist East and because it retains moisture really well so I'm just going to take the coffee filter out be careful in doing this it's very moist and I'm going to lay it on a piece of aluminum foil like this really messy so make sure you have a paper towel by hand to clean it up now what you want to do is you want to scoop it out and you'll see that the under layer is actually green and this is because it hasn't completed its sort of it'll turn red is what I'm trying to say eventually when you heat it up so I'm just going to put it all on the aluminum sheet and here let me set the camera down so you can see it better Yeah, so I'm just going to keep scooping it out. I find it's best if you just break it up like this. And then get all that off the spoon. And then flip it upside down and press. And you'll find that a lot of iron oxide will come off. Just by doing this a couple times and shake it. And then you can let the underbelly dry in a nice dry space over there. And once it dries, it'll just crack off. So what you want to do with this is you want to spread it out evenly. Like so. On the pan. I find this method is fastest because there's more surface area so it dries faster now you might have some hard time getting it off the aluminum but I think that's minor compared to the yield you get from other methods this has a much bigger percentage in yield so I'm just going to keep spreading this out and as you can see it kind of turned like a swampy color almost like this and you want it to get the spread as even as possible, like this. Yep. Or another way to do it is just take it out, take um, the coffee filter out, and let it sit and dry for like a week. But I personally just don't have time for that because I'm going on a vacation on Sunday, and it's currently Thursday right now. So I'm just going to spread it out evenly, and I'll be back with the next step in just a second. Okay guys, I'm back and I've equally spread all the iron oxide green slush, as I like to call it, out on this aluminum and put it on this old rusty pan. And I have preheated my oven to 350. And I'm just going to pop it in here. I'm just going to grab the pan. This is really hard while holding a camera. Okay, let me just get under the pan. I'm just going to put this in there. Now you should start to see some vapors come off. I'm just going to close the oven and I'll be back as soon as it's done. Okay guys, I'm back. It's finished drying off in the oven and it's actually start to chunk up. It's nice and cool so I can touch it. If you see these little green like it was before, it don't worry, it'll turn red over time if you're making like red iron oxide for thermite. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna 
set the camera down so you can see this like on the visual. So we're just gonna start scraping as such, making sure to keep as much on as possible. And I'll be back when I'm done scraping. Okay guys, I'm back. As you can see, I haven't scraped all of it off, but for video purposes, I'm just actually scraped scraped quite a lot of it off if you can see that mound there and you could just keep going over it with with a knife like th like so to get all the rest off but I'm just going to show you this much so then what you're going to need is a jar of some kind to store it in and after you scrape it off let me just set the camera down that what you're gonna want to do is pick up your tray being really careful not to spill it you're just going to transfer the iron oxide over to it then you'll probably notice that there's a bunch of big chunks in there this problem can be easily solved by getting a fork or some rocks, putting it in there and swirling it around. I'm just going to use a fork. You're going to mash it all up. It will be much better if you had a metal spoon to hold it and mash it up this way. And then you've got your iron oxide powder. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you liked it, please drop a like rating and subscribe for more, more weekly content like this. Yes. Bye.